Hi everyone and welcome to Together What If. We are in a series called Who is Jesus and Why Does It Matter? So why does it matter today, Jamie? So today we're going to get really practical and we're going to talk about some gorillas in the room huh. when it comes to marriage. Gor gorillas <laughs> gorillas and in the room. And marriage. I think we might need some Jesus for that. So let's get started. Let's get started. Hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Please comment, like, and share this content. Because together, what if? So what does Jesus, what does Jesus have to do with my marriage? Or what difference does faith make in a marriage? When someone is trying to juggle intimacy and connection and ambition and personal success, does throwing faith in the middle of all of that just make things more complicated? I mean, because I don't know, let's just be honest. I mean, three seems to be a crowd when I'm trying to just manage the two of us. But what if looking to Jesus could make your connection to your spouse more meaningful and it could make your intimacy deeper? I believe that faith gives us the lens through which we are able to see the other person, not just as someone that we lay beside in our honeymoon bed, but someone who we are willing to kneel down beside in a hospice bed at the end of life. So today I want to do two things. I want to talk about two things that are like gorillas in the room when it comes to our marriage. Gorillas. Gorillas in the room when it comes to our marriage. So first, let's talk about the small stuff. You ever heard the phrase, don't sweat the small stuff? What if it was the small stuff that were, was destroying the intimacy in our relationships? The weight of small things can truly turn into symptoms of a larger need. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus is teaching about the dangers of wealth and money, but he makes a statement that I think can be applied to other areas of our life when he says, if you're honest in small things, you'll be honest in big things. Friends, small stuff matters. Take, for example, a dirty sock. A dirty sock constantly on the floor becomes, you don't listen to me, you don't respect me. So it really isn't just about the small thing per se, it's about what that small thing represents. If we know that the sock on the floor annoys her and we just keep doing it, then it really just says we don't respect her. Or if we know that leaving the lights on around the house just absolutely drives him crazy, then it says we don't really care about your feelings. Your lack of intimacy could be the result of a lack of trust. So low trust creates low intimacy. And we can't give ourselves fully to someone who we can't fully trust. That's why Jesus comes along and he tells us to take care of the small things. Because small things can turn into a larger need and affect intimacy if we're not careful. Okay, so I got a second gorilla in the room. We've got another, another gorilla in the room. And that gorilla is something that we don't like to talk about, and that is submission. I mean, no one likes to talk about submission, right? Especially when we live with such an independent, self-assured mentality. Submission sounds like, sounds like a bad word, but if your marriage is going to be successful, mutual submission must be part of the equation. The Apostle Paul wrote a letter to a group of people in Ephesus. And this is a group of people that are trying to live out their faith in a world that is actually hostile to their particular worldview. And Paul says, live your life with love, following the example of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. In, in other words, Paul is saying, follow the example of Jesus and how you love. His love was not cautious. It was extravagant. And he didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. So Paul is saying, love like that. How is that type of love even to be lived out in marriage? Well, Paul tells us again later on in that same chapter, be subject to one another 
out of reverence for Christ. Now, if you grew up in certain Christian traditions, that verse probably is never quoted. But what usually gets quoted is the verse that comes after that. And that is, wives, be subject to your husbands as your husbands are to the Lord. Now, however, I believe this verse should be read as an example of what comes before it, the verse I read before. So Paul is calling us to submit to one another, and then he says, for example, wives, be subject to your husband. Now, of course, in Paul's day, if you're reading this as a first century reader or, or listener, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have raised any eyebrows. No big deal. Women, women were seen as subservient to men. But what would have caused some folks to really feel uncomfortable was when Paul said, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then he goes on to say at the end of the session, husbands, oh, by the way, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So here is how mutual submission fuels intimacy. Mutual submission opens the heart up for sacrificial love in a marriage. Her best over his best. His best over her best. Putting that other person first. Friends, that's the way of Jesus. In describing Jesus to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul will say, who, that is Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself and he took on the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form, Paul says he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So when you think about your marriage, think of yourself as Jesus thought of himself. I mean, Jesus had equal status with God, but he didn't think so highly of himself that he had to hold on to that status. Matter of fact, when, it, when the time came, Jesus gave up that status and humbled himself so that we might identify or that he might identify with us in our suffering. He lived and he died a selfless life. And that's the mind that we are to bring into our marriage. This is the difference having Jesus in our life can make to our marriage. So if we put these two things together, pay attention to the small things and mutual submission what we discover is that mutual submission says, you know, I'm willing to work on the small details because I value you. It also says to this partner, you know, I will learn to look past the, the small annoying things and I will focus on what is good about our relationship. When a mutual submission is practiced, it builds trust and trust turns into intimacy. So here's my challenge to couples or soon-to-be partners. I want you to talk about the small things, but I want you to do so in the mindset of mutual submission with the goal of having the best interest of the other person in mind. So where's my gorilla? So you see, some gorillas in the room are not that bad. Let's try to pray after that. So we join me as we pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for our relationships that you've called us into, but most of all, this relationship that we are invited into with your son, Jesus. And we thank you for the lessons that we learn as we continue to walk this path of discipleship with him. So Lord, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail.
for our call to action this week. We wanna share with you an opportunity where you can join us in sharing some fun and joy with students in Hall County. On September 7th and 8th, we are hosting a back to school party at the Path Project, the Baker and Glover Community Center. There will be over 40 kids each day. Michelle, do you know what our theme is going to be? Tell me. Going bananas. <laughs> So, how can you get involved? You can sign up to bring items and have items donated, or you can sign up to join us at Baker and Glover on September 7th and 8th. There will be an outdoor event and promises to be lots and lots of fun. There will be bananas and a gorilla. Now break it down, gorilla. It's gonna be fun. So email Misty at the email address on the screen to sign up. Together, what if? <laughs> 